<laughs> Here we go. One. This is going to be it. We're doing it. One, two, three, four. Now, all these demonstrations that I'm about to show you are from the Fizz Clips website, and I will put the link right there for you so you can link on these. They are very, very instructional to help us figure out some conceptual questions. You need to be able to solve these types of conceptual questions without any math, just by understanding it. So the first conceptual question we have is this. We've got a, uh, a jar of honey, which is very highly viscous. It's like a kind of a solid. Now we've got a jar of water. When this thing spins, the entire thing, including all the honey spins, when this thing spins, the water doesn't necessarily have to spin, although the jar on the outside will. Which one will win when we have a race between the two? So I want you to just think about that quickly, and let's go ahead and do a little bit of mathematical analysis to see what happens. So let's take a look at this analytically to try to make a prediction about which one will actually win this race, the honey in the jar or the water in the jar. So just to remind you of the situation, we have this honey right here, which is very viscous. It's very sticky and pretty much a solid, so it will all spin together. In contrast, the water actually doesn't have to spin. It's not attached to the jar, it's not solid, so the water may not spin at all. It'll probably spin a little bit, but it'll be relatively less spinning. Only the jar has to spin. So if we analyze, analyze this in terms of uh, the conservation of energy, uh, we have E initial, which is going to be in the form of MGH. Now you may ask, well, what is H? Well, I set right here the center of mass of this thing when it's at the bottom. The center of mass of it I set is UG equals zero, the gravitational potential energy equals zero because that's as low as that center of mass can get. And we got to pretend that the entire mass is right there. Uh, and you'll notice that I've measured the distance to the height of the center of mass when it's up on top, and I've called that h. You can, however, notice that the h between the center of mass at its lowest point and the center of mass at the size point is the same as the distance from the bottom of this thing to the, to the bottom of this thing over here. So either one you use is the same, although this is a little bit more conceptually correct because it's uh, center of mass to where the center of mass ends up that actually gives us the uh, change in height of this thing. So that is H right there. That's what we're going to use. When it gets to the bottom of this thing, it's going to have some translational motion. It's going to be moving linearly, but it's also going to be spinning. So this is MGH. What forms is this going to be in the energy final? It's going to be in kinetic energy translational due to its linear motion but it's also going to be in kinetic energy rotational because of its spinning motion. Because it's both moving translationally and it's spinning as it goes. So all we got to do is figure out, well, which one is going to uh, have more rotational energy, more of its energy locked up in rotational, and that will be the one that has a smaller translational kinetic energy, it'll be going at a lower speed. Now, these have the same mass and the same radius, so I don't have to worry about that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at this situation. My For the honey, 
MGH, that's our initial energy. Our final energy is going to be Ke rotational, or Ke translational, rather. Let's call it Ke trans. Plus, now this one, because all of the honey is spinning, that's got going to be a greater moment of inertia. It's going to have more energy wrapped up in rotational. So I'm going to make this really large. Ke rotational. Whereas in this situation, of course, for our water in the jar, it'll still be MGH, but it will be a smaller amount of rotational kinetic energy. I'm going to make this really tiny. Ke rotational. But notice this and this are the same. So what does that tell us about the kinetic energy translational over here? It's got to be giant. Ke translational on this side has got to be bigger. So which one will be going faster when it hits? Go ahead and make a prediction about which one will win the race, and then we'll see what happens. Now, let's see if our calculations were correct. I'm going to press play. Notice that the water wins by a mile because this has such a much greater moment of inertia. More of the energy has to go into rotation of this, so its translational kinetic energy is got to be less.